screencast, I'm going to demonstrate uh, how to use Inkscape's exonometric grids to, to draw certain objects. Uh, the first thing we'll do is turn off this page outline. So I'll bring up the Control Shift D uh, to bring up, sorry, to bring up the um, Document Properties dialog box. And under the Page tab, uh, what I will do is uncheck Show Page Border. Under the Snap tab, I'll make sure that I have Enable Snapping checked off. And now under the Grids tab, uh, on this uh, drop-down list, I'm going to pick Exonometric Grid and click New, which creates that Exonometric Grid on our canvas. I'm going to leave the default settings here. If you do a Wikipedia search on Exonometric, you'll see that you can do different types of projections um, with exonometric grids. I'm going to leave the defaults here, which I believe gives you an isometric type of projection here to draw. So we'll close that dialog. And now, uh, just like with other grids, as you zoom in, you will get finer grid lines. And as you zoom out, you'll get coarser to kind of keep you, you know, you'll find yourself zooming in and out to get finer and finer detail. Uh, let's get started here. I'm going to draw a fairly simple object. We'll start with uh, drawing a USB key. Now the way I do it uh, may not be the best way, but what I do is I use the Bezier tool. And because we have uh, snapping enabled, I don't have to uh, you know, click right on that grid line intersection. I can click anywhere near it and it's going to snap to that grid. So see here, I wasn't on there, just clicked and bang, I got a node right on the grid, which is what we're after. Um, what I'm going to do is just create kind of a very simple USB key as a demonstration. And I do that by just drawing a series of four-sided polygons with the Bezier tool, just with single clicks. Don't want any curves here. We're not getting fancy. So here's the body of our USB key. Okay, make sure when you finish off that last click that you highlight, make sure you hover over that node, make sure it's highlighted when you click to close it or you may not get a closed object. Next, uh, I'll just zoom in here a little bit. We're going to try to pr provide the next part of our USB key, which is the metal part sticking out. This is by no means terribly accurate, so we'll just go based on something that looks reasonable. Again, we'll just do all the sides that we need. Here to close it. And uh, for now what we'll do is um, we'll, we'll kind of make these solid shapes so we can better see what we're doing and what we want. So what I'll do is uh, hit F1 to get my selection tool. I'll hold Control Shift F to bring up the fill and stroke dialog box. And I'll take this top object and I'm going to do this for each of the objects. I'm going to turn off, uh, select the stroke paint tab, turn off the stroke, turn on the fill. My cat is really acting up tonight for some reason. He must be extremely bored. Um, listening to this, no doubt. So I'm just going to go with shades of gray here for the different sides, just to try and get something I like. Again, I'll select the next object, turn off the stroke, turn on the fill. We'll assume the light's coming from the left side. We'll light that up a bit. And we'll pick the front face again, turn off the stroke, turn on the fill. We'll make that darker this way. Okay. And we'll do the same here for, for the metal part of it here. Um, sorry if you couldn't see those keys down there. But um, we will now turn off the stroke on this. Turn on the fill, and again we'll try and come up with something reasonable for, as far as shading each of these sides. And the front face here will be darker. Okay, so there's our basic shape. And then you can go in and add you know, all kinds of details as you see fit. And what we'll do here is just very simply uh, it's a bit hard to do. Uh, you know, I have the window set fairly small for the screencast, so it's a bit hard to, to work here. Um, 
but I'm going to create a couple of those little holes that you see in USB keys. Um, and we, like I say, this isn't technically correct. We're just going to try to get something that looks reasonable for now. Okay, so there's one there. Another matching one here. Okay, and I'll select these two, turn off the stroke, turn on the fill. I'll make those full black. Okay, and out here we'll try to do something here with, uh, again, the Bezier tool. We have that solid piece that's in a USB key. We'll make that pretty dark black. Well, you're not quite black, solid black. Um, and then the part that runs back in. And the snapping really makes this quite easy if your objects are fairly simplistic. Something like that. Okay, so there's our very simple USB key. Uh, with the uh, grids, if we hit Control Shift D to bring up the uh, document properties again, uh, you can always um, usually you want to leave this enabled. Enabled means the grid, even if it's not visible, will still snap to it and, and use that grid. But for for checking out your object and how it's going to look, you can uncheck the visible uh, checkbox there, and you can see our object now and how it looks. So. Uh, the things you can do, for instance, uh, for something like this, little tweaks you might make depending on how you're going to use it is uh, one thing you might do is create a line here. The stroke will turn it white. We'll change the stroke style to be thicker and we'll blur it slightly. Maybe a, a blur of two. Okay, so now you get kind of a rounded edge to that. Now obviously this would need some fixing up for areas like this, but it all depends on what size of uh, object, you know, what size the object is going to be in the end, uh, whether or not details like that make a difference. You can kind of go hog wild and then find out later on that at the size they're used at, uh, those kind of details don't even show up, so you'll find yourself hopefully not wasting too much time on the little, little details. Uh, another thing you might do is um, you might put a shadow underneath it, for instance, okay? So we might take this top object, hit Control-D to duplicate it. We'll turn the fill black, give it a bit of blur, and then we might, you know, actually lower this down. There we go. To some point underneath, and hit Page, sorry. Once that object selected, hit page down to drop it underneath. That's a bit hard to see, but you now have a shadow underneath your object. Kind of make it look like it's sitting on a surface. Okay, so you can um, we'll delete that. One other way you might uh, do things is you might select this whole object, hit Control D to duplicate it. While it, everything's still selected, hold Control Shift Plus to create a union of that. And now what I'll do is turn off the fill, turn on the stroke, make the stroke black, and increase the stroke thickness, something like this. Give it rounded corners, and now I've kind of outlined that in a certain way, which may be something that you want. There's all kinds of different things you can do here. All right, so there's our, our USB key. What you might also want to do is create, you know, one other thing you can do with uh, the grids. We'll actually turn the, the grid visible again when we're working with it. And uh, the one thing I might want to do is say, okay, I want some arrows for my diagram. Maybe I'm making some kind of fancy schematic diagram. I'm going to use the Bezier tool again, um, and I might do something like create a kind of arrow. like this and then something like this.
this. One more down. You could kind of count as you go. Make sure things are lining up. And again, when you end these things, always make sure you hover over the node so that it turns red before you close it, or else you may not get a closed shape. And I'm going to highlight all three. You can probably barely see those objects. And I'm going to, first of all, increase the stroke so you see what we've got. I'm going to now, for each one, uh, actually I can highlight all three. I'm going to turn off the stroke, turn on the fill, and then I'm going to change the color of each one. Again, trying to mimic that same light source. Okay, so now we've got our 3D arrow. And again, you could take all three, duplicate them, make a union out of them, turn off the fill, turn on the stroke, and maybe increase that to some value we want around the corners. Now I have kind of a sharp looking arrow here, so I could use that in some kind of fancy schematic diagram. Okay. Another thing you can do with that union shape, uh, if we click the outline here, duplicate it again so I've got this outline that you see. I will turn off the stroke, turn on the fill, get some color that I want, Okay, and I'm going to lower the opacity of it. I've done this in other screencasts where you can kind of get both the tinted color that you want plus that shading underneath. So now the benefit of doing it that way is we could take this shape and change it to a different color okay, and get and still get that kind of shaded look out of it that we want. So that's one little quick trick that you can apply to all kinds of different diagrams that you're doing or uh, illustrations that you're doing. So that's basically it. Um, a couple quick things we've created using axonometric grids. We'll turn off the grid here, uh, make it invisible so you can see better what we've created. Here you go. Okay, and, uh, and that's really it. Fairly short screencast, uh, but I'm sure you could do m much more creative things with axonometric grids than what I've shown here. Uh, but hopefully you've learned something. Thank you very much for watching.